The first thing we need to understand uh, about English sentences is what a verb is and what a verb isn't. That is, we have to be able to identify the verb in the sentence, otherwise uh, we can't really talk about anything else that's going on in the sentence. So if I were to uh, present you with a sentence like this, uh, thinking about the contested election, Sandor felt a sense of growing dread. And if I were to ask you to identify uh, what the verb or verbs are here, I can almost guarantee if I were to ask a group of people what they think the verbs are, that uh, some people would uh, identify that, uh, some people would identify that, growing, uh, some people would look at contested, say that that sounds like a verb, uh, somebody would say felt, uh, uh, some people might uh, say sense, I sense a problem, uh, that sounds like a verb. Okay, now one of the reasons, because these there's a lot of errors here if people did identify those things as verbs. Uh, in fact, I'll, I'll, I'll give it away right now, there's only one verb here and it is felt. Felt is a verb and nothing else in this sentence is a verb. Now one uh, cause for confusion is uh, I think that the, the, the most common definition people have of verb is that it's an action word. and. People would look and say contested and say, well, that, that, there's a lot of action there, contested. There's, there's, I can see that, that there's some action there. Uh, feeling, felt, well, that's some action, but actually contested seems to have more action than felt. I mean, felt, that's kind of, how, how much action is there there? Well, this is just not a very good definition of verb. It's an action word. Uh, it would make a lot more sense to say a verb is something with a subject. And that's the main point I want to make, that verbs have subjects. Subjects are what make them verbs. There are no verbs without subjects. There are no subjects without verbs. And a subject and a verb can always stand together as a mini sentence. They could be a sentence. So Sandor is the subject of felt. Who did the feeling? Sandor did the feeling. Sandor felt. Now there are no other subject-verb combinations in this sentence. Well, you might say, well, thinking. Thinking. Who's doing the thinking? Sandor's doing the thinking. Isn't that a subject-verb combination? But you can't say Sandor thinking. That's not English. Sandor thinking. What is Sandor doing? Sandor thinking. That's not English. Uh, now, Sandor, Sandor is thinking. If that were a sentence, then indeed the verb is two words long there, and it is is thinking. Uh, and that would be an example of uh, a, a verb there, Sandor is thinking. But none of these other things have subjects. Thinking, Sandor thinking. Uh, contested? Who contested the election? The sentence doesn't even say. We don't hear who the subject of contested is. Uh, this is not a verb. <coughs> growing? Uh, again, what is growing? Sandor growing? Dread growing? Dread growing. This is again, it's not English. So, keep in mind that a verb is something with a subject. That is what makes it a, a, uh, a verb. And this is why, basically, uh, except for commands, the shortest uh, sentences in English are uh, two sentences, the two words long. And the two words are a subject and a verb. For example, Sandor wet. That is about as short a sentence as you can have. The subject and the verb. Verbs have subjects. That's what makes them verbs.